seriously, I mean, looking at you, I don't feel like you had lunch or yes, or oh. Yes, I got the desserts. I got the desserts. Yes. No, 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 no. It was I don't know some other thing. But I ate. <laughs> okay. So uh, we are starting with the lightning talks. Uh, we have got total eight lightning talks right now. Uh, the first one is Harsh Gupta. Is he here? Harsh Gupta. Oh, okay. Um, Amit Kumar is here. Amit Kumar. Okay. Yash Mehotra is here. Okay, Kunal is here. Yes, Kunal. Okay, uh, so Kunal would, uh, is the one whose topic is analytics vidya. With then, okay, so there are two Kunals. Okay, good. Oh, okay, ticketing and deployment, right? Okay. So Pratyush is here. Okay, Pratyush, good. Yeah, here. <laughs> okay, so we are having our first landing talk. And his topic is Django deployment using git push. Hi, so the topic is deploying Django projects using git push. So Heroku has this cool feature where we just git push the code and it gets deployed, uh, migrating the app and collecting static and all those things. So this is uh, about that thing. And um, the concept is basically that we use the git's uh, post receive hook. Uh, it is based on this talk uh, by Harry Percival. The blog post link is given here. And uh, the implementation I like to uh, uh, demonstrate is uh, using Ansible. Uh, uh, using Ansible, we can get this post receive file inside our source code, and we can version control it. So that's the advantage of using uh, Ansible with, uh, with this post receive hook uh, implementation. So. Here's the Ansible task. What Ansible does is that Ansible maintains the state of, our look, uh, of, a, of the remote machine just as we specify. So if we say that we need some, uh, some libraries, then the, it, and Ansible ensures that remote server has those libraries. Or if we say that create this folder, then Ansible ensures that this folder is created on a remote machine. So what we are here doing in the first task is we are initializing a, a simple git uh, Git repository on a remote server. And in this second task, we are just copying the post receive file into the uh, hooks folder, uh, which will be executed uh, as uh, when, when the code is uh, when the code is available on the remote server. So uh, we need to ensure that this file is uh, executable. And that is why we uh, changed the mode to 755. This is the post receive file. Uh, which is executed by uh, by the uh, git uh, git post receive hook. Uh, I will uh, go through some of the uh, main lines like uh, settings uh, to ensure that the script uh, stops running once uh, once any of the command fails. Um, this is simple, like we are switching to the virtual environment and uh, we are installing the require, uh, requirements file. Then we are collecting the static and we are migrating the app just uh, exactly as we do on Heroku. So we just git push and it, it executes all these uh, all these commands. And that's it. Uh, the, like that's <laughs> uh, we restart the uh, deployment server and the engine server, and uh, the code is live on server. So the uh, more, more details are available on this link. I picked up much of it from this talk. Uh, another alternative approach is to use Fabric and FabFile. The advantage in FabFile is that we can do other stuff also, like uh, running local tests before deployment and those things. But in case of Git push, like uh, in this approach, we don't need to, like the, the script is very verbose, so we can just uh, uh, know all the lines of code that we need to, all the command lines that we need to execute. So that's it, and I use it on my website, screener.in. It's a finance website, and you can ask me questions on Twitter handle. Thank you.